Well, we continue to see a really a fascinating weather pattern at the moment. Big extremes, big rainfall. We have got a lot of energy in the atmosphere at the moment. Big contrast as well in terms of the temperature. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This was the contrast on Saturday night across the British Isles. Minus 0 0.9 at Aviemore versus Manston's 17.8 Celsius. And of course, we did see some very, very energetic thunderstorms over the last few days, extending from southern Spain all the way up to the southern UK, where we've seen flash flooding, large hail, parts of Spain, up into France, and then even into Devon and Cornwall, we've seen flooding in parts of Devon in response to very, very heavy rainfall indeed. As that trough descended over the and to the west of Iberia, that allowed a lot of energy to then get tracked northwards with heat, humidity, and a lot of instability within the atmosphere. We've seen some very explosive thunderstorm activity extending from southern Iberia all the way to the UK. We'll look at that in just a second here. Indian Ocean Dipole, by the way, is uh, firmly positive now. And this is a tweet by Tom Saunders based in Australia showing the Indian Ocean uh, Dipole is in fir firm positive mode. Easterly wind anomalies have been strong for weeks. Negative values on the map in the Pacific. A westerly anomaly is now present over the west. Potentially the coupling has arrived with the, both the El Nino and the positive IOD. The first time we've seen that since uh, all the way back to eight years ago. So you can see here these uh, negative wind anomalies shown on the graphic here. And that is representative of a positive IOD. So it looks as if finally we are starting to see a coupling uh, between ocean and atmosphere, not only in the Indian Ocean, but also in the Pacific Ocean. And uh, we will see that feedback taking place, circulating the global circulation overall in the coming days here and weeks and months ahead. So very interesting times to come here, having a quick look at some of the interesting things going on in the last several days. I wanted to look back at the weekend and the extremity of the weather pattern. This is in Valencia County, uh, province, should I say, in Spain. Flash flood, but also look at the amount of hail and the size of the hail, the big splashes in that uh, flood water there show the sheer size of the flooding and the size of the hail here. This was a scene in parts of France uh, due to heavy torrential rainfall. So a very serious situation in several parts of both Iberia and indeed France. That was during the course of Sunday afternoon. And then actually we had um, you know, a tremendous line of thunderstorms extending from Spain right up through the spine of France and then extended over the channel and into the British Isles. As you can see here, the amount of lightning over the channel and into the south central portion of England was just phenomenal over the weekend here. And of course, with some of those downpours, we did see some flash flooding. There was tornadoes uh, spotted in northwestern portions of France. As you can see here, this tornado um, crossing this uh, roadway in the northwest of France here. So shows you the amount of turbulent atmosphere that was present, uh, you know, for an extent of probably close to 800 to 1,000 miles. In Swindon, we had a one hour rainfall of 66 millimetres and 85 millimetres inside the space of six hours. That one hour rainfall of 60, 62 millimetres, by the way, is a month's worth of rain falling in Swindon. So a tremendous amount of heavy rainfall in parts of southern England and this was the scene in parts of Devon um seen um at junction 29 of the M20 uh, the M5 sorry uh in Devon during the course of Sunday here so pretty remarkable weather actually to speak about and of course the hurricanes in the Atlantic lifting north particularly a uh, you know over the western portion of the, the, the Atlantic basin has then been enhancing the trough over the northeast Atlantic here. And that has, you know, you, you see that in the Pacific Ocean, actually, when you've got recurving typhoons over the West Pacific that they, you know, don't go due west. They have that recurve over the West Pacific, uh, the West Pacific Basin. 
and then in turn that pumps the heights uh, over the central portion of the Pacific and then actually has a trough over, it actually correlates to a downstream trough over the eastern United States. And to an extent, that's what we see with recurving North Atlantic uh, hurricanes where we see the, uh, the, 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 you know, the negative extending and deepening over the British Isles. Hence why we've got not one but two deep areas of low pressure present at the moment um you know close to our shores if you look at the gfs overview chart here you can see exactly what i'm talking about here so we've got one area of low pressure to the north we've got this secondary area of low pressure hanging back now notice here we are going to see a spell of heavy precipitation through the overnight period tonight here if we can get to the right chart i'll try and show you that exactly what's taking place because we do have some interesting development showing up on the models here as we push towards the weekend and in the next week with regards to higher pressure building in. And that could be attributed to a phase eight of the Manjulian oscillation moving through the, the western and central portion of the Pacific. That in turn enhances it sinking over the North Atlantic. We may start to see the shutdown, the gradual shutdown of the North Atlantic in terms of a hurricane productivity and production. But notice here the system that we've got at the moment. So we've got this 979 millibar area of low pressure uh, centered just to the northwest of the Outer Hebrides here. As we play through this loop, you notice what takes place. The shield of heavy precipitation moving out of North Wales, northwest England, now starting to move up into the uh, up across much of Scotland. And you can see here the central area of low pressure. That will become the focal point in the next couple of days but a very very wet night to come across scotland windy conditions further south across say uh, southern ireland and across much of england and wales here we're going to have gusts in, in excess of 40 miles an hour quite widely 50 60 65 mile per hour and exposure across england and wales through the overnight period tonight here and then as you can see that area of low pressure continues to deepen this is now the property the remnants of lee now starting to um, show its hand here we could see some very gusty conditions with this system a very notable um 969 millibar area of low pressure that is over the northwest of the uk here we don't have a tremendously tight wind field even though that central pressure is pretty low uh, it's interesting how we've got windy conditions but it's not excessive uh, you know stormy conditions um, it is quite interesting how the overall wind field itself is not particularly significant. But what we do need to watch here, if we go back to the bigger view, you can see here as we play it through the next several uh, hours here, what we've got is this vast complex of low pressure here. This is a big deep trough here that has been established as tropical systems have been moving north. It's been pumping the high pressure over the northwest Atlantic and then in turn deepening the negative the trough over the northeast atlantic uk and ireland and what that's going to do is we're going to keep our eyes very closely fixed on this trail and frontal system extending from the low just to the west of scotland and another feature here out over and near to the azores that frontal feature here extending from one low to the next could have some very significant thunderstorm activity associated with this frontal system as we move into tomorrow morning here and we could see some very intense thunderstorms blowing up during the overnight into tomorrow morning across England, Wales, extending down into the northwest of France, even northwest Iberia. As you can see here, this line of storms that could uh, cause all sorts of problems, I think, through the course of tomorrow, uh, parts of England, Wales, France and into northwestern Iberia here. But you notice here this messy conditions here large area of high pressure now extending over the north atlantic here of course as these tropical systems move north they're pumping heat northwards and of course enhancing the positive over the north atlantic and then in turn it deepens the trough over the uk and ireland here but like i say here this is the current um you know uh radar chart over the uk and ireland at the moment so, so you can see here this band of very heavy rain uh, we've got some heavy showers, longer spells of rain across northwest Wales, northwest England, western Scotland, and into the central highlands here. We've got some very heavy rain to come during the overnight period tonight. That is advancing northwards. And what we are going to see is the winds increase as well here. 
but uh, you know you've got this this uh, you know deep negative here, and if you look at the you know the CFSV two weeklies here, this is the upcoming seven day period. So you notice here we've got quite a strong positive over northern Canada at the moment. Here we've got a strong negative, uh, arguably the deepest negative anywhere in the northern hemisphere across our shores at the moment. But look at the flip around taking place as we move in the week two here. So this is the 26th through the 3rd of October. That positive stays put pretty much over uh, over Hudson Bay and northeast Canada here at the moment. But notice here that we are seeing that negative weaken slightly but shift westwards with higher pressure now over the UK and over Western Europe here. The reason why we've got that little bit of a shift taking place is likely enhanced by the Manjulian oscillation. We also have got a little bit of a shift in the hurricane tracks over the North Atlantic as well. So rather than it being up over the western portion of the Atlantic Basin at the moment, uh, pumping the high over the North Atlantic and then the negative over the UK and Ireland, what we are going to see is a little bit more of a kind of central Atlantic northward progression. And in turn, that then focuses higher pressure. It then kind of congregates and pulls the trough west into the North Atlantic and then in turn pumps the high more over the UK. So extending, pulling out of Europe westwards towards the UK and Ireland. So that's the type of shift that we're going to start to see in the pattern as we go from the upcoming seven days to the following seven days, which would take us into early October here. So if you notice here, we'll play through the loop. Now, the Manjulian oscillation has been fairly weak at the moment here. We've not had a lot of amplitude in the pattern. But watch what happens here as we push towards the weekend coming up. Notice the greens here. They start to become a little bit more prominent. Darker greens represent an enhancement in the Manjulian oscillation pulse, that then uh, kind of enhances and pushes into the central portion of the Pacific. Now, in turn, that's enhancing sinking over the Americas and over the North Atlantic here. And then as we play towards the end of this loop, you see that taking place. We're starting to see the shift, the eastward push of this large scale sinking extending from the Americas into the Atlantic Basin that then should start to shut down the Atlantic. But in turn, if we go back to the CFSV2, as we go towards week three, we start to see widespread upward motion sinking, should I say, actually, not upward motion, sinking or across more of the North Atlantic. So if we start to lose the cyclogenesis over the tropical and subtropical Atlantic, so we're not so much transferring that heat northwards, we are going to start to see heights coming up. Now, remember, as we go from summertime, where warmer than average waters enhances upward motion, so lower pressure, as we move towards a colder time of the year, the atmosphere naturally starts to cool down. Therefore, that warmer than average waters, as the land masses start to cool down, we start to attract higher pressure, so an opposite response from ocean to atmosphere as we move out of the warm season and towards the cold season. So we've got higher pressure, it looks like, developing week two and into week three as we go from September into the month of October here. So some quite interesting developments taking place. Now, this is Nigel, seen by the, the National Hurricane Center. It looks as if it's going to be a major hurricane. And instead of taking more of a westward track, it's going to take more of a central Atlantic track. Now, this is the track that would take it to the west of the UK as we move towards the weekend. The key to that is that we've got higher pressure now starting to build over the UK, extending out of Europe towards the UK and Ireland as we push towards the upcoming weekend here. And that may be a response to the Manjulian oscillation becoming a little bit more active, a little bit more stronger, and the presence being felt from the tropics but up into the, 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 the middle altitude pattern as we go forward here. So this could be a game changer as we move towards this weekend and beyond that here. So quite interesting stuff. There is also an opportunity seen by the models of a tropical system moving towards the Carolinas here. We've got a system that may develop quite quickly and move up towards the east coast of the United States. Instead of recurving, it goes into the, U, the, the USA now, what's important about that is it's the same in the Pacific. 
once we get systems moving into China, you can quite often have warmer uh, weather and higher pressure over the United States. We may see that. Take